much of um, so much of the, the philosophy that we've studied it always seems to be taken to to a massive extreme there doesn't seem to be um, a great deal of compromise in any in any of it you know there's there doesn't seem to be an awful lot of saying well this kind of works but we must also need to consider this there's no doesn't seem to be many counter arguments actually delivered or addressed in 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 the writings of these guys uh, yes and uh, Smith is a particularly categorical uh, sort of writer in drawing his conclusions and he does claim them to be uh, pristine scientific conclusions um, r rather like Newton now Newton was also as it were wrong uh, because the law of gravity is nonsense the, he's claiming that it applies universally throughout the universe and there are parts of the universe I believe they're called black holes where it simply doesn't so the claim to universality doesn't work and if it's not universal it's not a law therefore it's just another kind of uh, delusion and Smith Smith really is the same so you can't entirely hold that against him um, he's found a system which he believes is completely consistent with all the evidence uh, as it stands and I would give him enough credit to say that if he knew about some developments we now know about in human psychology for example he, he would have adapted his theory or abandoned it saying well it, it doesn't work like a machine humans are not me mechanistic they're actually quite complex but he's a very categorical writer. And one reason to read him is he's very clear and straightforward and, and categorical. So was it quite a shock to the people at the time to have something like this delivered to them? Um, specifically, with something as, um, as you know as, as cold an idea as economy. Um, yes. So to have to have something like that turned into a science and, and delivered to them in, in you know in a time which was um, you know was quite. Big, still, still big on you know things like emotion and religion and that kind of thing. To have all that taken out of it and delivered with the science in a similar way to to Newton was that quite a shock to the people at the time, or do you think they were? Yes, ready it, for it was a complete scandal. So um, he, he was a radical. He would have been seen as a radical, a kind of uh, somebody from kind of otherworldly approach, professor, professorial approach. Unlike Swift, who was very popular. Uh, Swift was a kind of popular guy. He'd had a massive hit with Gulliver's Travels. That was very widely read. So it's kind of Smith is the rather dry as dust scientist with these obscure kind of theories about stuff which have stood the test of time. And Swift is the man who's just ridiculing him for a kind of crazy idea. Oh, look what the scientists have come up now, hidden and remark nonsense. Um, so that's kind of how, how that, that, that works. Um, he was probably an atheist. Uh, it was illegal to say you were an atheist at that time, even in Scotland. It was blasphemy. So his, great, his other great friend is David Hume, who, who, who we've read a little bit about uh, in terms of epistemology. He has the same epistemology, um, empiricist epistemology as Locke. It's often said that Hume finishes off Locke. And, um, he, was, he, was, he was persecuted for being an atheist because there's no God in this system. Mm. Uh, it, there's no God really in Newton. Uh, God, this is the god of the clockmaker, the god of the pan creator who makes the universe as a kind of perfect, beautiful clock, then God retires. So Smith is kind of atheist, he's kind of controversial, his ideas are not popular with the mass of people, uh, these are ideas rarely are. He's popular with the merchants and with uh, people promoting economic development. Um, and finally, I'm afraid time is uh, defeating us again. But uh, just as a final question, uh, Chris, if you could explain briefly why you've given the students uh, a reading of Swift, uh, a modest proposal, as a sort of foil for, for Smith. Why, do you, why you chose that? Well, first of all, a modest proposal is a peerless piece of writing anyway uh, from that period. But it's... If you read the Modest Proposal without knowing about Smith, you'd miss at least half the jokes because part of the jokes are just in the style that he's written it. Now, actually, it doesn't quite work 100% as brilliantly as I would like because Modest Proposal came out before Wealth of Nations. But part of the joke that people don't get unless they've done the Adam Smith stuff is that it's written in the same style. Now, I have a few observations to make about how the Irish economy works and so on like that, and he amasses the data. And then he very reasonably assesses, does Swift, all the objections to it. Now, people have said that it might not taste nice. Well, there's a variety of uh, recipes you can do, etc., etc. 
Um, and people have objected that it's against human nature, but it's not so because we know of cannibals here, cannibals there, cannibals there. And so he, he very politely, very reasonably kind of demolishes all the objections to this idea that uh, they're all starving. The reality is they're starving to death in Ireland. The babies are going to die anyway. This is the argument he makes. They're going to die slowly. Dying of hunger is almost unimaginable in our society. It must be one of the worst types of death you can imagine. Why not just kill the baby now and sell the meat? <laughs> With the meat, you can then uh, survive. And also, he says, the men will stop beating their wives. This is another benefit because they'll want the babies to be healthy and, and to have lots of babies. And they'll look after the babies when they're young because they're worth something. It's absolutely... I've had students in the past who, can, who literally cannot spot a flaw in it. And without knowing that it is a satire on Adam Smith, you can make that kind of problem. Fantastic. Well, it's just left to me then to thank uh, <coughs> Chris and Andrew and Jack and uh, sign off uh, until next time. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.